Growing up in New York, real bummer, because you're always in a class scholastically. See, in every grade there was the ones through the fives. Like it was 6-1 through 6-5. Now the brightest kids were in 6-1, on down. I was always in the fours, next to the dumbest. Actually, the fours were the dumbest because the fives were like the criminals. <laughs> they were the only kids in the yearbook that had pictures front and side view. <laughs> now, as if it weren't bad enough that you were going to school with the same group of kids throughout your whole elementary school career, when you were in one of those classes, it was always alphabetical order. I sat in back with the same kid for seven years in a row. His name was Arnold Horshack. Talked out of shy of his mouth like this. Hello, I'm Arnold Horshack. Horshack was not too cool. If it was five minutes to three and the teacher forgot to give homework, he would remind her. Ah, Miss Montgomery, aren't you going to give us any homework? Oh, that's right. For tomorrow, memorize the Encyclopedia Britannica. Horshack also had his name on everything. Came to school every day with six pens. Each pen had Arnold Horshack written on it. If I really needed a pen, he would not give me a pen. Horshack, please give me a pen. I need a pen, Horshack. Sorry, no loansies. By the third grade, everybody started to call Horshack Horshit. By the fourth grade, even the teachers picked up on it. <laughs> All right, who knows the answer to that one? How about you, Horshed? You know what that is? <laughs> Outside, whatever you said to Horshack, you would say, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, up your hole with a mellow roll. <laughs> a mellow roll was a little ice cream that they sold in New York. And up your hole with a mellow roll was a rank. See, whenever you said something bad about somebody, that was called ranking them. Either you said something about their parents, or you told them to shove some inert object into one of the different orifices of their bodies. Now, the more you dislike the person, the larger the object. With Horshack, it was things like the Empire State Building, the Louisiana Purchase, Now, the best kid at ranking in the school was a kid named Eddie LeCarry. He was the best kid at ranking, best kid at fighting. Had his own group that followed him everywhere. They had their own tables in the lunchroom. <laughs> Only tables that had a waiter, you know. <laughs> we had our choice of milk or orange drink. Eddie LeCarry had a wine list. <laughs> How, what would you recommend with the Franks and Beans? Ayla Carey was the reigning ranking champion. Best kid next to him was a kid that was about a year older, a black kid named Freddie Payton. Freddie, you had to call Freddie Payton Freddie, because you called him Freddie, he really got pissed off and he would rank you, you know? <laughs> they had it out one day. Freddie Payton had some good Italian lines. Hey, Le Carey, you know why Italians don't have pimples? Because they slide off. <laughs> Le Carey was was the inventor of the masquerade party rank. That was his specialty. So he looked at Freddie Payton and he said, oh, why don't you shove a stick up your ass and go to a masquerade party as a fudgicle? And Freddie became heavier as the years went on, but he just wasn't ready to take on Le Carre again. And Le Carre was reigning king until a kid moved to New York from Philadelphia. Now, the first day this new kid is in the school, the teacher introduced him. a new student from Philadelphia. Nobody pays much attention to him, except Horshack, who goes up to him in the schoolyard and thinks he could take advantage of him because he's a new kid. He goes, hi, you're from Philadelphia, huh? 
I'm Wild Horseshack. Up your hallway at Melrose. Kid doesn't flinch. Says, up your ass with mobile gas. Then he tips his hat and says, happy motoring. Horshack thinks for a minute and fires back. Oh, yeah, well, up your heart with a marrow. <laughs> and then the kid does something we've never seen before in all the history of ranking. He does his next rank in an impression. Does Groucho Marx. <laughs> ranking. Oh, yeah? Well, up your butt with a good word. And a ziggurat white is cucumber. <laughs> By the way, I heard your mother's like the Pennsylvania Railroad. She's been laid all over the country. <laughs> Everybody is shocked. We have never seen class like this. We decide to set up a match. Big ranking contest. Eddie LeCarry against the kid from Philadelphia. Epstein the animal sets up the match. <laughs> Epstein was an animal. He was voted most likely to take a life. <laughs> Epstein talked like this. I don't remember when he didn't talk like this. I think when he was born, he talked like this. He said to the doctor, slap me again, I'll break your fucking head. You know? <laughs> Epstein was, of course, a five. <laughs> and there was talk one year that they were going to make Epstein the only six. Put him in a class by himself and just let him carve up the desks, you know? <laughs> Do his own curriculum. I pledge allegiance to myself. <laughs> Epstein did a lot of cute things. One afternoon, he opened up Horshack's Roy Rogers lunchbox and peed in his thermos. My Bosco tastes funny. <laughs> Happy trails to you. <laughs> Match is set up. It's going to take place Friday in the gym. It's okay because we have a gym teacher who's really into things like this. Gym teacher's name is Mr. Caruso. Mr. Caruso does not speak English. He speaks Jim. <laughs> One time I was playing basketball. It was like the first week, you know, we had Mr. Caruso, and he was telling everybody to get athletic supporters, and he could tell if you were in one or not. You know, he was really keen at that, you know. <laughs> And uh, I wasn't wearing one, and he came up to me, you know, I was playing basketball. I said, hey, yo, hey, come over here. You know, one day you're going to go up for a rebound, and the family jewels aren't going to go with you. I didn't know what he was talking about. Next day I shut up for practice without my watch and my mezuzah. Did you take care of family jewels? I said, I left them in my locker. Yeah. <laughs> it took us a half hour to revive Mr. Caruso. Yeah. Match is set up. Friday in the gym. Gym is packed. Kids come from other schools. Eddie LeCarrie and a kid from Philadelphia walk to the center of the gym. Scoreboard is lit up. <laughs> Cheerleaders. 
Rank them high, rank them low, rank them anywhere or go. Your mother, your mother, yeah, your mother. <laughs> Mr. Caruso lays out the ground rules. All right, everybody, you want to be quiet? I a Philadelphia kid here, the carry your reigning champion. Now, you boys know the rules? Anything goes except dead relatives. <laughs> But Carrie here being our champion, we'll go first. Carrie walks around a circle, eyes the Philadelphia kid out. Hey, so this is the Philadelphia kid, huh? Listen, I heard the only reason that you was born was because the drugstores were closed on Sunday. I also heard your father is a skin diver for roto Rooter. Kid comes to life. Right into Groucho Marx. Oh, yeah? Well, I understand your father won yesterday on Queen for a Day. <laughs> Say to Sigurd Wade, and your sister gets a free shot of penicillin. <laughs> Look, Carrie was waiting for Groucho Marx. He was ready. Oh, yeah, Groucho! Hey, why don't you take your bird, put him in your DeSoto, drive them both up your ass, and wait for George Fenneman to give you a loop job. <laughs> we think the kid is going to go back into Groucho Marx, pulls a shocker and does Jimmy Durante. Wait a minute, LaCary. I understand that your mother can take on Dion and the Belmonts, the seven Santini brothers, and still have room for the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. Dinka, dinka, do. Everybody in the gym goes, whoa. But Carrie is losing for the first time in his life. He's desperate. Pulls a desperation move. He says, oh yeah? Well, up your hallway a mellow roll. Jim is completely silent. Except for Arnold Horshack. That's a good one, huh? Up your hallway a mellow roll. Oh yeah, good one, huh? Kid finishes him off with Alfred Hitchcock. Tonight's drama concerns your mother. <laughs> Who on a recent trip to Washington gave the Lincoln Memorial a hand job. Mr. Caruso stops the contest. <laughs> Goes up to the kid, he wants to know if that's true. <laughs> All over for LeCarrie. I wonder if that's strictly an American phenomenon. You, know, you think they do that in four, because they do that in all social levels in this country. You know, it goes by a hundred different names, but it's the same thing. You do that in France. Hey, say mama capulator vet Eiffel Tower. <laughs> China. You don't want to know how you don't know how you know what? Your mother. Poland. Hey, Trojewski, my mother wears combat boots. 